Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome back for another recommendation here. But before I start, as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to get notifications for when I put up new content, which is usually once or twice a week, although occasionally I can work in a third entry. Um, be sure to check out my back catalog and share both this video and the channel around because it really does help the channel out quite a bit. Now that that is out of the way, it's the latest entry here for some of my retro reviews. It's been a while since I've done one like this, maybe since 3 o'clock high, which I will link to in the description. But this is for an 80s throwback that I hadn't really heard much about in recent years until just the past couple months. Can't Buy Me Love from 1987, starring Patrick Dempsey, Amanda Peterson, Courtney Gaines, and a very young Seth Green in one of his first major roles. Um, this one seemed to have kind of uh, flown under the radar for a bit, but um, seems like, I guess, it just uh, came out on Hulu recently. It was on HBO Max before that, and it's starting to get a little bit more notice. So, let's go into our synopsis for this, which reads as follows. An outcast secretly pays the most popular girl in school $1,000 to pretend to be his girlfriend for a month. Okay, another basic one there, but let's go into a little bit more as non-spoilery as we can detail here. Um, but yes, he offers to pay this girl $1,000 to be his girlfriend for a month, but there's going to be no funny business or anything going on. It's um, just to help, you know, this character, Cindy, played by Peterson, um, with a financial situation that she came up with. Um, this outcast, played by, you know, Ronald, played by uh, Dempsey, um, this is just to kind of help her with that purchase that she needs to do and to help him become more popular simply by acting like they're dating, you know, acting like they're in a relationship, see if all the popular kids kind of take to him and then he's able to finally be one of the popular kids instead of the one of the little nerds at school. Now, she helps to kind of work him into the popular crowd, um, update his fashion sense in a way and so on, and surprisingly it works. It works well so well that there are actually issues with his previous set of friends. You know, the other outcasts feeling like they've been cast out. I guess that's why they're called outcasts. Um, of his life as well. And, um, you know, as if, like, now he's kind of too cool to spend any time with them or anything. Um, it also presents a problem in that these two aren't really dating, and they only planned this for months. So of course, it's going to be an issue, you know, along the way as far as when they try to break up and still maintain their standings within their social circles, not to mention deal with any feelings that they may have developed during this fake relationship. Now, um, like I said, I hadn't heard much about this film over the years. Um, I'd watched it not too long ago, and I really felt that it held up. You know, it's still really entertaining, really funny, really relevant and everything. Um, but that's not just my opinion, because, um, you know, looking back on this with the rose-tinted glasses, because I actually... Um, you know, I've seen this one, yeah, 50 times or so on cable when I was growing up, but, um, you know, it started to work its way around again. It actually finally saw the first reaction video I've ever seen anybody post for this by uh, Cassie of Popcorn in Bed, which I will link down below as well. This is a film that she hadn't seen before, but was right up her alley, having uh, really been particular to, um, you know, romantic comedies as she was growing up. You know, though much of her channel was for franchises she hadn't seen before, as well as a few one-off films which were not in her normal wheelhouse, um, this one came up as a recommendation for her, and she seemed to absolutely love this one. So it isn't just me. It's nice to know that it's actually holding up with others as well. And I think uh, the main reason why is that most, if not all, of the main cast of characters actually do go through, you know, some learning and growing, you know, this growing phase um, through this little experiment that's happening. Realizing that the division that many of them have in high school isn't based on anything, really. It's just social cliques. Most of these kids were friends when they were growing up, and then when they got into high school, they kind of separated out and almost became enemies in some way. These almost like a different caste system. But, you know, throughout this story, you know, needless to say, people catch on as to what happened. The situation falls apart. Um, we do get a nice little romantic ending thrown in here, you know, to wrap everything up, with no one really coming across as a specific antagonist, you know who needs to be overcome at the end. Really, just the idea of cliques in general and this plan on dating somebody to get popular in one of those cliques, those aspects were the real antagonists of this story, if any of that makes any sense. So anyways, it's a really fun comedy. It's still relevant. Holds up really well. Don't take it from me. Take it from Cassie. She loved it. Um, anyways, that's about all I have. You know, I think it's worth checking out. And speaking of checking out, thank you for checking out this video. 
be sure um, to check out a few of my older 80s reviews. I'm going to go ahead and link those down in the description as well. Um, but yeah, be sure to follow those YouTube notifications I mentioned at the beginning. And um, thanks for sticking around to the very end of this, and I will see you in the next one.